ओम ज्ञान चिरंधस्या ज्ञानं जनशलाकाय चक्षुरनीलितम येना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः आई एम जस्ट गोइंग टू स्पीक फ्यू वर्ड्स without direct reference to the bhagavad gita as it is yeah without chanting so we don't only have half an hour thank you for taking me out on hari naam sankirtan in kaunas i think the maybe the first time i came here we went out with sanatan kumar yeah you should all know his name actually he's the, practically the father of preaching krishna consciousness in lithuania new generation can hardly imagine the difficulties that the devotees had to go through during the brezhnev andropov etc era yeah well i mentioned the name of some mahajans you could also mention them for the uh, for the communists brezhnev and andropov they were mahajans they don't know the word but they had the same outlook he doesn't even know the name he never heard of he never heard of andropov so anyway uh that's when uh, in in those days harinam sankirtan started here and it was very dangerous to do it at that time not only in the communist world i remember once in uh, london it must have been 1976 or 1977 we all came out of the temple to go on harinam and before we could go anywhere the police had all they were piling us into vans to take us away Anyway by the grace of Bhagavan Gora Hari times have changed and people are appreciating the in general people are appreciating by the grace of Shila Prabhupad who is the great representative of Bhagavan Gora Hari I've had the opportunity recently to engage in Hari Nam Sankirtan in many places just uh, it's about 10 days ago I think it was let me see now it's two Sundays ago mm. two no two weeks ago two weeks ago in i was in jamnagar in gujarat which is yeah it's a city in gujarat which is a state in india we had rath yatra there jamnagar is rath yatra actually jagannath rath yatra those who hear nicely can speak nicely then uh, just before that uh, on, on the wednesday before that that was the actual official day of rath yatra we had in Vadodara which is a major city in Gujarat and that was like like a 27th 23rd consecutive year something like that and uh, maybe about uh, 200,000 people come out to see Jagannath you can't imagine in Konas i think the population is less than 200,000 and then the day before that we had Rath Yatra in Anand which is a small city just north of Baroda small city means it's about 200,000 something like that in india it's not very big so uh, then uh, after the rath yatra in jamnagar i came over to uh, europe and uh, was uh, had the fortune to engage in hari nam in prague oh you have photos uh, prem bhakti pradeep prabhu was there he has many photos of that prema bhakti pradeep prema bhakti prada sorry prada prada i got it wrong um I remember again many years ago this was again maybe early 1980s I was in, I was in Bangladesh and Prabhavishnu Swami had just come from Prague just been traveling in Europe so I was traveling all over Bangladesh and we had having wild kirtans all over Bangladesh as the local villagers they would uh, their happiness in seeing devotees from the west would spill over if you imagine like a whole village full of devotees as is enthusiastic and uh emotional as advaita acharya prabhu you get some idea so anyway he said uh, prabhu ishu swami said that well i think uh he said Pr- prague is maybe the best city in the world for hari nam and he traveled all over the world so i guess he knows it's difficult to say exactly which is the best but it's prague's almost like designed for hari nam lots of walking streets with lots of tourists and then the uh the acoustics are very good because the streets are not very wide and the uh, the sound is reverberates so in konas during the summer which is of course the main tourist season the uh, from the temple every day they have hari nam going out in prague did i say konas i did sorry excuse me well you can do it in konas also <laughs> and then uh in london every every saturday the every saturday night they have hari nam in the in the main downtown area and that's been going on since time immemorial although actually in london that when in the when the temple first started 
It was every day, all day, that was the engagement for almost all the devotees. Just go on Harinam, go out in the morning, come back for lunch, go out in the afternoon, come back, have an evening program. That was it, that was the daily program, 365 days a year. Anyway, uh, during most of the year, you get lots of crazy football fans in the Saturday night in London, which is because they come from different parts of the country to London for watching the football game, and then afterwards they go around the city and cause little trouble before they go back home. So usually we run into plenty of football fans in the Harinam in London. Mm -hmm. Saturday night, Saturday is the football day. Well, it wasn't the football season. Just this was when last Saturday, one week ago. But there was another. There's always something. There's always some protest or some parade or there's always something. And if not, there's always lots of tourists. So there's always plenty of people down there on Saturday night. And actually, some devotees go out every day from still from the London Temple, but not a very big group. They go out for Harinam. Anyway, uh, this Saturday we just come from our. It, it, was, it was a special Harinam for us because we were at Bhaktivedanta Manor, which is uh, the big centre just outside London. We have a smaller centre in central London and a big centre just outside London, mm-hmm. Bhaktivedanta Manor. That was the centre donated by George Harrison, if you've heard of him. Mm-hmm. And, and Srila Prabhupada spent quite a lot of time there himself. So uh, anyway, uh, we just finished the uh, Brahmachari seminar. There. And there were 80 Brahmacharis from different parts of Europe present. So uh, usually about, uh, well, anything, 30, 40, 50 devotees go on Harinam on Saturday night in London. But this time, because of the Brahmachari seminar, there were quite, there were six sannyasis scheduled to take place and 80 extra Brahmacharis. So the Brahmacharis and... I think two of the sannyasis, was it? Myself and Jananda Maharaj. Did any other? Dhanavir Maharaj, we went in the bus. We all went in the bus? They all went in the bus with us? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we, the famous uh, London double decker bus, we took it, we had a bus from the special bus chartered from the manor to central London. Mm-hmm. You know, these double decker bus, they're famous. So there was no football uh, crowds there, but mm-hmm. there was a. S- there was a special uh, parade going on. It had been going on that day in London. There were about 2,000 members of a gay pride, whatever it is, get-together. You know what gay pride means. Uh, ironic, just after the uh, Brahmachari seminar. So, I got the opportunity again to join in the Harinam here. I don't lead many kirtans because my voice is quite weak and I lose it quite quickly. I used to in my youth, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> so please keep up this uh, Harinam Sankirtan. You see how people are appreciating. Uh, perform as often as possible, in as many places as possible. You can go to the internal villages also. Definitely if you go in the villages and do Harinam, it'll be... a uh, the talking point for the next six months, probably. <laughs> you know, in the village, if the cow, if one cow slips down and cuts his foot, it's something for the people to talk about for a week. I actually remember just before I joined the movement, I was traveling in the uh, highlands of Scotland. It's an area in which there's very small population. The highlands, it means a mountain area. So I was looking at a local newspaper and there was there was a little report that Mr. So-and-so of such-and-such a village uh, fell off his bike. He wasn't, <laughs> he, he wasn't hurt. He, so, you know, they're really low on news there. So if you go village to village and do Harinam and book distribution, then that will be very effective. And uh, it actually, it's we don't realize how much uh, impression it makes on people. We may not realize. It's like we saw there was when we were coming out, the children, they're so much appreciating. Children, old people, all kinds of people appreciating. Nowadays, we find um, many people are coming and taking interest in Krishna consciousness because they say, well, when I was young, I used to see your devotees singing and dancing. Anyone here like that? When you In your childhood, younger generation, you used to see? You're not so young. I know myself in... Uh, I meet many people who in Bengal who said that you know, when I was when I was a child you came to our village 
I went to so many villages, I can't even remember them all. And they remember, it make, they remember me, for, you know, like 20 years, 30 years ago, they remember, and it, it makes a big impression. So, Golok Era Prema Dhana Harinama Sankirtan, this Harinam Sankirtan is the wealth and the treasure of Golok, the spiritual world, which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu have brought to this world. Of course, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he wasn't a, just a sentimentalist, as people sometimes think. He, uh, apart from singing and dancing, he also instructed his followers in the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. Mm-hmm. I've got that book, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu book. So people should know also that uh, what is the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. People uh, feel very happy to see our devotees because our devotees are happy. It's a genuine, ha- it's genuine happiness. It's not the uh, perverted happiness that people experience when they get drunk or when they smoke cigarettes, but it's the happiness of the soul. And because everyone is a spirit soul, they they can begin to appreciate that this is what is the genuine happiness of Krishna consciousness by seeing and hearing the devotees performing Harinam Sankirtan. And just by appreciating that Harinam Sankirtan, they make such uh, tremendous spiritual progress mm-hmm. so that when they get Srila Prabhupada's books, then they can uh, appreciate this unparalleled philosophy. Because of course, Srila Prabhupada's books, they are Something uh, unimaginable for the materialistic people. I saw, as we were going around Konas, I saw several bookshops. I think in these countries, northern countries where they have long, dark winters, people probably read more than in other countries. But uh, again, Srila Prabhupada's books, they're bringing news of the spiritual world. So these programs, holding Rathiatras and other festivals going out on Harinam Sankirtan, distributing Srila Prabhupada's books and distributing Krishna Prasadam. Gradually this will uh, change the hearts of people. This we want. We don't want that Krishna consciousness will always be just a few people. Actually, it should be everyone. Srila Prabhupada always spoke of changing the world or re-spiritualizing the world. Actually, we have solutions to all the problems of the world. This uh, joining the European Union has created new problems for Lithuania with their very strange policies they have. It's mm. destroyed destroy the farmer policy. Srila Prabhupada was uh, very much against this over-centralization. You know how to translate that? Over-centralization. That uh, traditional life is simple. People... Most of their needs or their daily needs are produced locally. This complex civilization just produces so many problems. So even materially, the Krishna Conscious Bone actually has the solutions to all the problems of the world. So we should push on this Krishna conscious movement and spread it more and more. Of course, we may say, well, there are so many problems within our movement. And in that regard, uh, I have a question which someone sent me, which I'd like to read out now, and then I'll answer it. The question is as follows. Some devotees put forward an argument that if the institution, this referring to ISKCON, becomes blasphemous, or shall I just read it out and then give it to you and it'll be easy for you, because long sentences. Some devotees put forward an argument that if the institution becomes blasphemous or offensive to its founder by deviating from proper Siddhanta and also starts to practice things that are unauthorized by the Acharyas, one who wants to follow properly should leave such an institution, and that we should not stay within its ranks as he will have to also be responsible for the offenses. Yeah, that's one sentence. What should we think about it, and what should we do as per your desire? Yeah, I don't know how much you're aware of all of this, but there is a lot of what we could generously call internal churning within our society. Can you, yeah. Is that okay? Can you translate that? And uh, there are various Mayak influences, we could say. At the Brahmachari seminar, I, I spoke about this a little bit, and no one, no one said, well, it's not true. Everyone knew it's true. Is the influences of uh, mundane academics, feminism, uh, 
Just like even at the GBC level, they've instituted calling women Prabhu. But then one of the GBCs uh, said, came out open and said, this is nonsense. So uh, this is just to give some idea. There's there's all kinds of different ideas. Personally, I uh, I joined this movement because uh, I found that Prabhupada's ideas were perfect. And uh, I didn't change my opinion. They're still perfect. Although, I mean, it's a big topic, but there are some people who think that Prabhupada was materially influenced or that what he did was okay then, but it's not okay now and we should change everything, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, it's a big discussion and I won't get into all the details now. Otherwise, we could be here, for, you know, for another yuga probably. In the meantime, everything will have changed again. Um should we leave the institution? This a disciple is asking my opinion. What, what is my desire about this? Well, I think that's fairly obvious that uh, I haven't left it, so it's fairly clear what my idea is. And, and I think if, we don't really want anyone to leave, but if anyone leaves, better those leave who don't want to follow Prabhupada. Mm-hmm. Of course, everyone will say they're following Prabhupada. Mm-hmm. Just like Prabhupada pointed out about the Christians, that they say they're following Christ, but they... They don't. Anyway, uh, one of uh, Srila Prabhupada's uh, actually most, uh, you could say one of his closest disciples, it was uh, Giriraj Maharaj, closest in as much as he used to, he had a lot of personal association with Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. He actually took sannyas after Prabhupada left, but as a brahmachai he was, uh, Prabhupada placed a lot of trust in him. So he used to ask Prabhupada a lot of, what we could say, acute questions. So, or very thoughtful questions, you could say. So he related that once he asked Prabhupada, that Prabhupada, there's, there are so many uh, problems arise within our society. And now that you're here, we can solve them by just asking you, what's the proper thing to do? But what should we do after you pass away? Now, Giriraj Maharaj related that usually when he asked Prabhupada a question, Prabhupada would reply pretty much instantly. But in this case, uh, Prabhupada thought for some time and then he eventually replied and said that, uh, well, don't leave the institution. If, if there, Even if there are serious problems, don't leave the institution, but try to work within it to improve the situation. Now, that can be very difficult, but uh, despite all its various internal problems, I still don't see a better medium for serving Srila Prabhupada and the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu than ISKCON. And in most cases, those who go away, even though they may have what seems to be a good reason to go away, in most cases, their service and their level of Krishna consciousness just goes down. So there are many problems, no doubt. Problems, deviations, compromises, all kinds of things. But there are also many uh, very sincere devotees and that is the hope of our movement so in brief that's the reply go on keep on going on harinam and distribute these books and uh, be aware what is right and what isn't right and stick to good association okay that's it in brief i've given several seminars on this subject so i don't want to speak at length on it anymore if someone feels so much outraged they might leave I, it's, I guess it's an individual choice. But uh, again, you have to see how, you're, how you can best serve and remain in Krishna consciousness. Okay, so it's time for Arati. So we'll do that. If anyone... Uh, I was talking about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission and then I remembered that I have a few books of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in English. I think there's not much use for most of you who don't know English. But if anyone would like to take the book in English...